Welcome to Daniel's Inferno. My name is Daniel. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you have a moment, please like, subscribe, share, and join the conversation below. I'd love to hear from you. So today we are going to be talking about what's going on in both America, uh, but more specifically Canada. We are going to be making some juxtapositions to the current state of things in America. Uh, because the climate that's going on in America is definitely a major cause of what we're talking about today. So as you can see on the screen, High Park Vigil held in memory of Regis Krasinski Paquette, I'm just going to call her Regis from now on, was, was held. This was yesterday. So mourners gathered at 100 High Park where a woman apparently fell to her passing. The event was held in Toronto, so her friend said that you could never find anyone as amazing as Regis, and she was a very close friend. They want to know, He wants to know the situations of what's going on. We all want to know what's going on. Um, you know, very upset he didn't get to say goodbye, kind soul. So it has sparked widespread community reaction and online attention. After her cousin and mother took to social media following her passing, initially claiming she was pushed off a balcony by police. All right? That's a very harsh and very not only liable, but very severe statement to make against the police. And it's a very heavy accusation that better have some proof to back it up. In a statement released Saturday, Kina Singh, the family's lawyer, said family members are now waiting on evidence from the investigation before any further conclusions can be made, adding that statements made prior to May 28th are not part of the official statement. So people arrived sporadically to show their support. Many different people showed up. Um, you know, people are claiming that you know, racism is an issue in this country and uh, we need to figure it out. The special investigation unit is looking into it. Um, so re reports claim that Thursday there was a call as a 911 call for help and it ended in her passing. So I don't believe it goes into it in the CBC article. I mean, they do talk about how there's been a lot of misinformation and a lot of lies. Uh, this is the police chief saying that, and I agree. There has been a lot of misinformation and a lot of lies. This is a very big thing we need to understand. No family members were inside the unit or apartment at the time of the Kashinki of Kashinki Pequet's passing, and it's unclear if anyone even witnessed it. The police received three 911 calls for an assault with at least two of the three calls saying a knife was involved. However, when the police arrived and spoke to her, her brother and mother, there was no knife present and no assault taking place. Uh, they strongly believe her death could have been prevented. So this is Saturday. People, people took to downtown Toronto, thousands of them, some people wearing masks, other people not caring. Social distancing is gone now, people. So apparently, if you were one of those business owners who wanted to reopen and you wanted to kill grandma like they claimed, you don't want to kill grandma anymore because it's okay to go out and be this close to people. Protesting what organizers described as anti-black and anti-indigenous racism around the world. The peaceful rally, it was peaceful here in Canada, was organized by a group dubbed Not Another Black Life, comes on the heels of high-profile police-involved deaths in Canada, this one, and the U.S. So a Minnesota officer is facing a murder charge and the death of George Floyd. Uh, he was the individual who was caught pleading for the officer to get off of his neck. Investigations are ensuing on George Floyd. The only comment I'm going to make is obviously it was horrific. You know, the man was down and he was subdued. He was handcuffed. 
there was no reason to take it any further than that. Uh, the police have an obligation to serve and protect, and this is not what happened. Regardless of what George Floyd was doing, and I heard at least, that had to do with some sort of t perhaps $20 counterfeit bill or something like that, a very small misdemeanor, uh, did not need to end like this. However, that and this are only the same in the color of the person's skin. That is the only similarities here and the outrage that's being generate, generated, obviously. I have to say the cultural difference, obviously, Canada is being much more peaceful. There aren't riots, there isn't looting, there isn't burning of buildings and innocent be people being attacked and murdered in the streets for no reason. A rally was scheduled in Montreal for today and a similar protest was held in Halifax. So all of this started from, well, a call that was made to the police, as we know. The call to the police involved, apparently, that there was an assault going on. We know that Regis had epilepsy or seizures. We also know, and I believe it's in this article I'm going to go through for a moment, we also know that she had some mental health issues. The family had actually asked that uh, screens be put in so that it would be a preventative measure for any sort of attempts at her own life. So we know these things. We also know that when somebody has a, a mental health issue and the police are called, often they will send out like a specialized nurse. However, they will not do this in cases where it is a violent confrontation. And if there was a knife involved, then it was obviously a potential violent confrontation. So relatives say that she was in the midst of a mental health crisis and that they called police to the apartment building near Bloor Street and High Park Avenue in order to get her help. Sanders told reporters Friday, so again, Mark Sanders is the police chief of Toronto, three separate 911 calls about the incident on Wednesday evening and that two of them mentioned assaults involving knives, prompting a heightened or priority one response. The call was for assaults and knives and were stated by at least two of the three people who called. He said that seizures were also discussed in at least one of the calls, but the fact that weapons were aligned to have been evolved meant that a mental health crisis intervention team, or MCIT, that a police unit that includes a specially trained nurse would not have been dispatched. There is not a lot of information about what happened next, but a lot at some point she asked to go to the washroom inside her apartment and was followed in by several officers, according to her mother and her brother. She then fell to her passing sometime later. Uh, they are probing what occurred after police arrived at the apartment. It would be unusual to send an MCIT unit to the call as it would put the nurse in the middle of a knife fight. So as I said, that's not their job. They are not trained to deal with these violent confrontations. So the police chief and the lawyer met Friday at police headquarters. Later in the day, uh, the lawyer told reporters that, well, the mother believes police had something to do with the fall. She does not believe she was pushed, as she said in a video on social media circulated widely after the incident. This was not witnessed by the mother. However, at the time of the statement, this is what the mother believed. The family strongly believed or believes that if police handled this in a different manner, their daughter would still be alive today. All right, police handling something in a different manner and police shoving your daughter or throwing her out a window are two absolutely separate things. The outrage that has been generated here in Canada is this family originally using the outrage of the U.S. to heighten 
the presence of what happened to their daughter. And it's horrific that they sullied her name in this way by lying so vividly. You know, her cousin and her mother both posted videos claiming the police shoved her out the window or threw her. We have no information of that. Nobody witnessed that. The family was not inside the apartment at the time. It was only the officers. Only the officers and the deceased know what happened. That's often the case in these situations. I'm not defending the police. I am saying, however, the police have a few different jobs, and the jobs are very dangerous. Okay? It involves putting their own personal safety at risk. We also know that this young lady had mental health issues, apparently bad enough that the family had asked the apartment manager to install preventative measures to sway her away from doing anything to herself. And to originally claim such a heinous thing that the police just chucked her out a window it's horrific. How could you lie like that? I know how. They want, As I said, they wanted to ride the anger and the outrage of George Floyd's murder and Ahmed Arbery's murder. And they wanted to paint this as a racist, you know, bigoted, horrific incident. And we have no evidence that that's what happened at all. I, I'm not claiming that what happened to George Floyd wasn't horrific. I'm not claiming that this young girl's death wasn't horrific. I am claiming we have systems in place to investigate and prosecute. These systems often, not always, but they often work where people who make these horrific acts on other people are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and face some sort of penalty. It's not always what we want. It's not always what we think is just. But there is penalty often involved. And I know with police, there are unions. There's, you know, there's the idea of paid leave that they always get. So even if they have done something wrong while the investigation is pending and ensuing, they're still getting paid, which is, you know, it's an unfair thing to think of. They're not working. They're getting tax dollars because they're supposed to be servicing the community, and they're not. But again, the family claiming this horrific act has really sullied the name of their daughter. I mean, instead of galvanizing people and saying, you know, they could have made this about mental health and about how we really need to focus on mental health here in Canada. That's a whole other video because we really do. The mental health status of Canadians is very very it's low all right we need to work on our mental health here in canada instead they try to make this an idea of racism of police hate and there's no evidence of that at all if i'm wrong if you have evidence of something that i haven't seen in my research please feel free to show me down in the comments but the videos that I have seen have been the family members making these claims, not any sort of proof that police officers did anything that they weren't supposed to do. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniels Inferno.